Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 2011 release of the 8.8 centimeter Flak 27 anti-aircraft gun by Tallery under the special special scale edition, uh, which is a new tools segment. And it's a kit for ages 14 and up, as the skill level is uh, 4, and it's in 148 scale. Now the kit includes 100 pieces, molded in light gray styrene on three-part trees. And there's a lot of nice details there, but nothing really that an uh, intermediate modeler can't handle. The kit provides some nice uh, cruciform uh, gun carriage that can be built in the firing position or in its travel configuration, and the gun can be moved uh, closer for travel uh, on the battle shield. It also has uh, a gun shield with a viewport armor plate that uh, can be positioned open for firing or for travel. Now it comes with two wheeled carriages that are attached to the cruciform carriage so that the gun can be towed around the battlefield. Now it also has uh, water slide decals and paper signal flags. Now this gun was widely used in, as an anti-aircraft gun but in 1940 Rommel used it uh, as a anti-tank weapon uh, in a very effective manner in a place called what is known as Hellfire Pass. Now the Italians used this gun uh, and accordingly the box art is for the 22nd Flak uh, Battalion there and it is based in Bologna, Italy. So that's the markings that you'll see on this kit. Here's my version of the open box review. I could pick each piece up and talk about it but after all that won't help you put it together. So here's your open box review in 15 seconds. Here are the decals for this kit. And the registry is good, but they come in two colors, black and white. There's also some thread used for cabling in this kit, and it's included too. I would suggest, even for a kit of this size, if you have any contours, you're going to want to use some decal setting solution to make sure that it conforms to contours and sticks well to the plastic. But, as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue, but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Construction starts at step one with the base of the gun. So you, you'll find that there will be some, some flash, uh, some parting lines and perhaps some injection points that you'll need to clean up uh, throughout the build. So make sure that you do those uh, per, you know, preventive me measures before you start to build anything and always test fit the parts uh, before you glue them together. Here you'll see uh, that you'll need the, um, the base of the gun, the supports and the skids and cranks and the valves here and make sure that you do th that cleanup. Also pictured here are the tow hooks and the tie, tie downs. In these two slides you'll see the parts needed to complete the recoil system for the gun and uh, they're pretty easy to assemble once they're cleaned up and they uh, uh, they kind of snap to put together. Now on the next pick uh, is main gun base and movable legs and uh, these can be built in the down or deployed mode or up in the towed mode. Uh, again they go together well. I elected to build my gun in the deployed mode uh, so it's ready to fire now. Now we'll assemble the support here as you've seen uh, and if being towed this would strap around the barrel uh, to keep it in place during transport. Uh, it says just to snap the end piece in but I glued mine in uh, and it's not going to be in the towed position uh, with uh, so that way I wouldn't lose that part. Um, there's also an upper ring base that the gun rides on when traveling. Here's a close-up of how it, uh, their base should look to this point and uh, the second one uh, is the opposite side of that so there is a front and a back on the kit so make sure to, that the hold down is towards the front. Now here's the, uh, the, the gun and uh, the barrel end of the business um, so you're going to want to make sure to clean these up well. The parts fit nicely and uh, you know use uh, just a small amount of glue and clamp the parts together so that they're tight and you lose most of the seams. And note uh, the, the uh, circle there in the red uh, the yellow end, we'll, we're going to clip that off later, we'll show you why, but that's going to be removed. Now you'll note uh, that these parts are assembled. 
um, and they're ready but it, you can see uh, quite a parting line uh, seam on the top uh, where both halves are put together so you need to you know you clean these up the best that you can uh, lengthwise gather up these parts to build the sides of the gun and um, you know it includes the cranks the gauges the fluid containers the seats etc and you can see that uh, once assembled uh, uh, at this point the gun starts to take shape so we're going to uh, get these sub assemblies um, staged up here and uh, if they're not done you know you, you have to go back and finish them if you need to do any more cleanup etc so you should have built both the, the right and the left sides and the top cylinders so then grab the base and the hydraulic cylinders along with the gun sides and the gun will be next for assembly here is the gun with the finished sides and uh, remember that um, shot uh, earlier where I said we'll clip off the uh, air yellow where the yellow area points to the end there the instructions are kind of vague on that um, but if you built it with that in in still in position your gun will be in full recoil in what is called the out of battery condition which is fired and then not returned to start so when when you have you slip that snip that end off you, you slide the end into the gun receiver and it'll look like it was uh, supposed to we'll get to that in a second here so in this pic the um, the part I was talking about there that's clipped off is built uh, incorrectly uh, so this is wrong and now with the gun uh, added to the cradle uh, you can see that this is the correct position for that part uh, it is uh, uh, makes it look properly um, uh, readjusted after its uh, normal cycle of, sh of shooting so be careful because uh, it also uh, has a lot of detail here so make sure that it's cleaned up and everything fits with test fitting this is the uh, opposite side view and uh, in the normal position as we discussed here are some uh, opposite side views uh, close-ups so that you can see how the small parts all fit into the main uh, sub-assembly unit here now we'll stage the um, the gun platform and the gun and do some test fitting and make sure that it fits together well before we move on to assembling these parts. Now the gun here uh, is assembled and uh, it's ready for paint having been uh, primed and you can see uh, that there's a great amount of detail in this kit so it's a good one. Uh. Now we're going to gather up these parts to build both the front and the rear carriage and a uh, note in the kit uh, there's enough uh, parts to do both uh, but the front has a tow bar and the back carriage has the seat so shown is the front carriage uh, axle the wheels uh, four per carriage and then the suspension in the tow bar uh, not yet needed is the armor plate or the shield for the gun now assemble the parts as the instructions show and uh, you can see here how they go together this is both uh, the front and the rear and how yours should look up to this point to give you a little more uh, detail to see where part placement is, um, this is both the front and the rear uh, finished uh, subassemblies for the carriages. Now we'll uh, gather up these parts, uh, which include the steel cable rolls, wh where there are two per carriage, along with the rear seat and the hand brakes. So build the uh, cable reels and mount the thread, or what's a uh, faux cable here, inside them. I use a little dab of super glue to let it harden so that uh, you can see here how I left it in the pictures. Now uh, pull together the bases that these reels will be sitting on and get them uh, ready and staged for assembly. Now using some super glue for this step, um, take the, the reel uh, with one end glued to the inside there to keep it in place, then roll the thread around the reel itself about uh, a quarter of the thread into place, then clip it and then saturate the uh, thread with super glue so that it actually looks more like cable and will keep the uh, thread in place without fraying. Uh, then later on we'll use it to uh, place a clamp on the cut end for some weight to keep it on the reel. Now we'll mount the bases of the reel and uh, we'll take notice that the, um, the reels have a small leg and a longer leg and the smaller leg goes towards the front as shown here in the photos. Now we use a, a heavy clamp here to hold the threads shaped on the reel so that it looks like real steel cable hanging straight down. Now finish the other three and add them to the carriages and here you'll see an almost completed gun and carriage assembly. 
Now we can paint the unit and for the first pass I used uh, Tamaya XF57 buff color. Uh, I did it in a light color as a variation for the German guns and you can see the details really starting to show up here. The entire gun uh, painted in this base color. Now we'll also paint the carriages with the same uh, buff color, the Tamaya XF57 and after they've dried uh, I actually used a little bit of black wash here to uh, to highlight some of the areas that might have some grime on them before the uh, camo is applied. Now adding the camo uh, is my favorite part and for this first pass I used Tamaya XF62 which is a flat olive drab and just made some you know tiny squiggles with the airbrush with a fine tip to get the uh, lines the right scale and you have to be kind of close so don't thin the paint too much um, I started with the carriages and then the gun and by the time I got to the, la the glass gun carriage uh, it was starting to dry so then I could change the color uh, and I went with the Tamaya XF64 a flat red brown uh, using the same setup and, and pattern uh, in different places uh, which is what uh, mostly what I found on the internet uh, also the back of the shield um, uh, you didn't need camo so it's left buff. Now these lines should be light not really bold. Uh, it's an easy way to s simulate outside use and wear and tear. Now here's a close-up view of one of the carriages. Uh, you can see that with the three colors the camo uh, will look uh, pretty convincing. So try and get yours uh, close to this. Now this is an Italian gun uh, not a German gun so uh, it's not uh, bold in definition for paint. Uh, add the same uh, uh, camouflage pattern to the other carriage. So uh, here is the gun so move on to that and do the same camo pattern uh, but you'll see of course this is still missing the extra detail like the gauges and the cranks and uh, we'll paint those soon. So here's another view of what she'll look like about then. Notice the tires got painted with overspray but you'll paint those black along with the gauges. Now here's a picture of the two carriages um, the one with the uh, reel uh, up at the top left has not been painted. It's still in uh, the buff mostly. But in the other pic, uh, you can see why we had soaked it. Once it's painted uh, using some steel colored paint, uh, it looks like real cable. So uh, pretty soon we'll wash the entire kit and give it some extra weathering. But um, the difference between the two uh, is amazing. And the second one is much more realistic uh, when you use a little super glue and some paint. After you've painted all the spools, um, the cable reel spools, you can start to add a little wash to your uh, uh, units. Um, use um, more water than paint, but uh, thin down some black paint with thinner, and then start around anything that's uh, you know neglected, like under the seats or between the frames and the connections, places where grime would settle, and then uh, it really changed how the kit looks. Uh, it goes from uh, sh off the uh, build and construction showroom floor to uh, dirty and war torn. So, uh, add the uh, carriages here. Uh, a little, some little tiny paint chips uh, shown in silver, and uh, they get toned down when they're washed over. Now the units are finished and ready to decal, and you can see that it looks uh, pretty battle worn uh, after the washes. So now apply your decals using some warm water and a blade to position them. Um, once that's done, add a drop or two of the setting solution to make it bond to the uh, uh, model. Now we'll get a good look at the carriages uh, after they've been w had the weathering and decaling applied. Uh, they look, um, you know, pretty distressed and and would look great in any diorama. In the next few pics, we'll show you some more areas for paint. The sides of the guns are finished here, and uh, I uh, painted the um, the gauges and the the two top main cranks uh, black uh, because uh, I found that in other pictures that the other cranks were not painted uh, black and it showed that the seats were uh, uh, wooden in some of the later war uh, picks but um, the early ones seemed to be just painted or metal so I left mine in metal painted but uh, worn. Now you can see all the pieces here have been uh, black washed and decaled and ready to put on your into your diorama or shelf. Uh, overall, it's a pretty excellent kit. So there you have it. It's uh, completed guns and carriages that would make uh, an excellent addition to anyone's collection or diorama. Um, 
this kit went together very well. The pieces fit well together. Uh, there's just a little cleanup with seams when you put halves together, etc. Uh, but remember, uh, you can always use this for both uh, German, uh, Italian, and Russian uh, batteries, and uh, it, it has markings that uh, will allow you to do all three. For its size, it goes together uh, with just one real issue, and uh, that's building the gun out of battery, and uh, that was easy to repair, so we showed you how to fix that. Um, Italeri gave us uh, the first of its kind for this scale, and with uh, a few the few parts that you get, it's still a pleasure to build, uh, and I think you're going to love it if you want to put one of these on your shelf. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review, and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you can find us on Facebook, and also at our website, www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks!